Hey everyone, this is Cobain the Christian. Uh, I want to just continue the series on naturalism and its troubles. Uh, and today I'm going to talk about Alvin Plantinga's evolutionary argument against naturalism. Because I see a lot of people make the same objections to this argument, but I don't think they've really grasped its force. Now essentially, Plantinga's argument goes like this. It is irrational to hold both Darwinian evolution and naturalism at the same time, because Darwinian evolution as such does not care about what you believe and whether your beliefs are true or not. It only cares about what you do. It only cares about survival value. Thus, the probability that your beliefs are true on Darwinism are, at best, about 50%, and because they have such a specific informational content, just given random production of your beliefs, that it's probably much lower than 50%. Now, given this, if both Darwinian evolution and naturalism is true, then you have what is called a defeater for all of your beliefs. In other words, you have a conclusion which undercuts the basis for your believing anything at all, including naturalism and Darwinian evolution. Now, the first thing I want to say with respect to this argument is that this argument is not an argument against Darwinian evolution. I myself do not accept evolution, but you can accept this and hold evolution at the same time. All that you have to hold is that God is the one who oriented and ordered evolution in order to produce creatures who would hold a preponderance of true beliefs. And remember, we're not just talking about big picture metaphysical beliefs, we're talking about I believe I have to use the restroom, I believe I'm hungry, I believe, uh, I believe that I'm eating a cheeseburger right now, I believe such and such. Uh, so we're talking about all of your beliefs, even what we would consider trivial ones. So you can hold evolution, you just can't hold it while you hold naturalism. Now the most common argument against Plantinga's case is that, well, evolution actually does care about what you believe because having a preponderance of true beliefs is correlated with survival value. So here's an example. Uh, if I'm in, a, in the African savanna and I see a lion, if I believe that that lion wants to play with me, then I'm not going to survive and reproduce to pass on my genes to my offspring because I would try to play with the lion and uh, get killed and eaten. But if you believe that the lion wants to eat you and you should run, well, then you will pass on your genes to your offspring, so evolution does in fact care about having a proper perception of reality. Now, on the surface, this seems like a good argument, but a little reflection reveals its problematic nature. Let's consider two hypothetical persons here. Uh, one of them believes that the lion is hungry and wants to eat him. The other one believes that the lion is delightful and wishes to play with him. But also, critically, the person who believes that the lion wishes to play believes that the best way to play is to run away from the lion as fast as he can until he's out of sight, and the person who believes the lion is hungry believes and acts upon the belief that uh, the best way to avoid being eaten is to run directly into the lion's mouth. Now you can see that the person with the true belief, namely that the lion is hungry, has less of a survival value than the person with the false belief, namely uh, the lion wishes to play. And why? It's because the true belief is correlated with uh, a action which is not conducive to, to survival. Now, even here, I have not fully cashed out the force of this argument because I've only explained it in terms of a subsidiary belief, namely the lion is hungry and the best way to avoid being eaten is so-and-so, or the lion wishes to play and the best way to play is so-and-so. But actually, we should really understand this not in terms of beliefs at all, because if naturalism is true, then determinism is true. We're all determined by purely material forces. We don't have free will. Even if the quantum realm is indeterminate, that doesn't entail that we have freedom. It just entails that our behavior uh, has a degree of randomness to it. Um, and so if naturalism is true, determinism is true. And what this means is that our behavior is entirely governed by instinct. So let's consider a frog and a fly. Why does the frog shoot out its tongue to catch the fly? 
Is it because he has a belief about the fly? Does he rationally think through his options? No, it's instinct. He has a set of instincts, and he behaves in accordance with those instincts. Now, according to naturalism, humans are not different in kind than animals. Uh, we likewise have a set of more complex instincts, and we behave purely in accordance with those instincts, and there's no free will or self which governs a realm of indeterminate choice. Um, now, the important thing here is that this means our beliefs has absolutely no effect on the world. What we believe is irrelevant. There, in fact, there's no reason for us to have beliefs in the first place. Uh, but even if we grant that we have beliefs in the first place, given naturalism and Darwinian evolution, even if we grant that we have beliefs in the first place, there's absolutely no reason at all for those beliefs to be correlated with an action conducive to survival. Beliefs might just be kind of like a television show that runs in the background. Beliefs might be correlated uh, to survival when those beliefs are false rather than true. If a person believes a lion wants to play, if a person believes the lion is hungry, if the person believes the lion doesn't exist, if the person believes the lion is his future great-granddaughter, it does not matter with respect to survival value. All that matters is that he is governed by the instinct to run. The beliefs are irrelevant. Now, really try to think this through before responding, because this is very unintuitive, because we are used to a world where our beliefs uh, are correlated with right action. That's because in our day-to-day -day lives, we all basically assume we have free will, we assume we have minds, we assume we can accurately perceive the world, we try to organize these beliefs into a rational system, but on naturalism, none of that makes sense. On naturalism, what matters is instinct, instinctual behavior. That's it. Any beliefs at all? Totally irrelevant. No reason for them to be correlated with, survival, with behavior conducive to survival. And that is why holding both naturalism and Darwinian evolution at the same time provides a defeater for all of your beliefs. Now, I should just say, to be precise, Plantinga is not arguing that, uh, using this argument, that naturalism is false, just that you can't be a rational person and hold naturalism. Uh, that's a subtle distinction, but the, the difference is one of warrant versus one of truth. So one could have a warranted belief that is false, if one has good reasons for it, or one could have an unwarranted belief that is true, if one believes something which is true, but for poor reasons. Now, on planning this account, uh, any reason you give for holding both naturalism and evolution is necessarily going to be a poor reason, uh, because we're not we don't have the capacity, or we don't have any reason to think we have the capacity for rational thought in the first place. Um, now, what this entails is that we can't live our lives consistently as naturalists and Dar Darwinists at the same time, which means we should look for another worldview which is more livable, which justifies the basic assumptions which we all make, like there are minds other than my own, there's a world outside my own mind. Um, I have the capacity to make choices. That's the basis of a whole lot of our legal system and so on. But those are kind of uh, uh, footnotes to the main argument of this video, which is that Plantinga's evolutionary argument against naturalism um, has not been refuted. No one has even come close to refuting it.